What is going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. This is one of those high-end devices where the only way that you would have got on this list to get this device was to have Facebook or to know somebody that won it on Facebook, maybe get it secondhand. They do have a website available, but you really can't purchase anything from the website. I just want to let everybody know before I get into this, if you've been following Hellfire for a while or you've been following Otis Collection, I don't really care about the tiff between the two of them. It has nothing to do with me and has nothing to do with this dripper. Hold your comments if you're gonna talk about them. That's not what this is about. What this review is about is the Hellfire Addy Sentinel. I don't own any of Hellfire's products. I own a lot of high-end shit. I've tried to get their box, I tried to get on a list to get their box, and then I had no luck. I had already tried to get my hands on the Venom box mod just because I knew that those two would go so well together, and they are both from Hellfire. It just makes sense to put them all together. I wasn't able to get one. However, the way that I usually pick up devices is I will wait for an item to come out on Facebook, and I'll try to join the list, and hopefully I get picked by the random. If not, then it is what it is. Sometimes Sometimes I'll contact the manufacturer and say, you know, listen, I really want to get my hands on one because there's a couple of people that want me to do it. And that's usually the case. I don't just make up stories to get one. So I'll just pay out a premium price. I'll say whatever it is, I'll tack on another 40, 50 bucks just so I can get my hands on one. It doesn't matter. I'll wait to second batch, third batch, whatever. Most of the time, companies don't even pay me no mind. They don't even give a shit what I'm saying. I'd say majority of the time, they just ignore me because I'm not the most pleasant person that most companies would want to be the face of the review. They'd rather send it to somebody else or not send that at all. If you've noticed, there's not a lot of reviewers that do high-end devices, and that's just because reviewers get a lot of stuff for free, whether it be from China or the Philippines. Limited run shit, there's really no need to promote it just because it's limited run, and anybody that likes high-end likes high-end. I saw the picture of it, top airflow, little baby jammy, 22 millimeters, I gotta get it. Plus, it's Hellfire, and I don't really have any Hellfire products. So I contacted the owner, nothing. Contacted the group, nothing. Contacted everybody I possibly could, got nothing. Said, okay, I guess I'm just not meant to get this. I'm in a group that did a group buy, and I've never done a group buy before. I didn't even know what it was. I guess you just a bunch of people get together, everybody puts their money in, and you pick up what you want from the form painted at. You know, whether that be MSRP or RIP, I don't know. So I had to get one. And then I couldn't just stop at one, I had to get two, because you never know. You never know. I might like the device that I want to use two different juices in it. And knowing me, it's like if I buy something off of Amazon, if I buy one pair of scissors, I'll buy 50. If I buy one box cutter, I'll get 14 other box cutters. I go to the extreme lengths. If I buy one vacuum, I get eight more. Because you, you just never, ever know. With this, I got two of them, and then I got all the accessories for both of them instead of just one. So I got two Ultim caps, two Delrin caps, Two Ultim drip tips, two black drip tips. I think I got an airflow ring. I don't, I got a bunch of random shit, but I will show you everything that I got. Now keep in mind, one of these I am gonna keep, and then for the other one, I got something real special. I'm not Costco. I don't give away free sand. I'm not Charlie Subs in the mall giving away little pieces of subs for free. I'm also not that Asian restaurant that has the little snippets on toothpicks to give you some. That's not who I am. I'm not gonna be the toothpick guy, not. So if you are interested in when I do give this away, don't go to the Facebook group or go to my Patreon and be like, how do I get this? How I wanna get this? Just, just wait. So without further ado, we're gonna bring this down, show you everything in both of the tubes. In the meantime, let's flip it. Tubes, typical stuff that we've seen with all high-end devices. Open it up, let's take everything outside of the box. Right there, what we have in there is the 510 converters. However, this is 810 compatible. When you get this, you're gonna get a peripheral bag and inside the peripheral bag, you're gonna have your drip tip, which is gonna be 810 compatible, a regular standard 510 pin, if you don't want to use the squonk capabilities, an extra squonk screw, and some O-rings. When I buy things, I have to buy it with everything. So I got the Ultim top cap, the Ultim airflow, the Ultim drip tip. I also got the Delrin airflow, the Delrin drip tip, the Delrin cap, and then an extra black drip tip. Now this black drip tip is actually an 810, but a whistle tip. This you don't see often. Usually whistle tips are 510s. I think I bought two of them just because I've never seen them in an 8 
810 configuration and I have a lot of 810 drip tips, so I figured it'd be pretty badass. When you're looking at the Ultim rendition or the black rendition, it has more of a wider base to it, almost like converting a 22 into a 24. And the reason that is, is because this bottom piece goes over, encapsulates the whole bottom of the Sentinel. You can mix and match, you know, Ultim and stainless steel don't typically look very well together. They look a little awkward. Now the drip tip that is in there, you'll see that there's a little bit of a converter. It's very hard to see and it's very, very seamless. And that's because the, the machining of this is superb. Now this is a high-end dripper. I'm just going to tell you now, if you're looking at getting one of these drippers, it's going to cost you like two beans. Just throwing that out there right now. On the bottom here, you're going to see no indications of the actual authenticity of this. You just have to trust where you're getting it from, whether or not it will be authentic. There are some fingerprints on here. There are some scuff jammies, and that's from me. That's not so much from the company itself. The first thing I thought of when I saw this was the Aeolus, but it's not to be confused with it at all. Top piece here, your airflow adjustment ring is going to pop off. Although it appears to be threaded in a sense here, it is not. What you're looking at is the 510 converter for your drip tip. This is a really thin section right here. I feel like machining that, you do risk the chance of that snapping because there's not a lot of metal right there. Really simple airflow adjustment ring, nothing crazy there. This drip tip converter, I'm gonna tell you right now, you can call somebody on the phone that loves you right now and ask them if you could borrow their fingers because for whatever reason, this drip tip converter is not exactly the easiest to take off but you see what i did there just go ahead and use something soft and muji and guji on one side and just give it a good push and you'll be able to get that out if you already have an 810 drip tip that you like the likelihood of it working in this is probably pretty slim because the only way you're going to get an 810 in here where it's going to fit and be press fitted in is if there's an o-ring on the actual 810 there is no o-ring on the top cap definitely needs to be cleaned up a little bit because this is funky monkey I'm trying to figure out if that is Grime or on your chimney there, you're going to see little groove cutouts. Those are going to line up with the grooves of the deck right there. So this way your airflow on the top is going to line up with the airflow over here, which actually is top airflow, but it's not. It's coming in from the top, but it's mainly hitting the coil on the side. This is a single coil deck. What makes this really nice is over here and over here is going to be the spot where you're going to put your jig or whatever you wrap the coil around just to place it really perfectly dead smack center. This isn't designed for a dough coil or a quad or four coil. You're going to run one single coil down the center your airflow although it looks like it's at an angle because of the placement of it it's really not it's a straight shot directly onto the coil contacts for whatever reason are an awkward size allen key that this did not come with i find that a little awkward how are you supposed to take this apart without an allen key and an awkward size to boot. Threading on the screw is super, super smooth. The way you build this is you kind of wrap the legs around. If you're using thick enough wire, you can kind of get it in here, screw this down to pinch it down and have a good connection. Take the coil, you wrap it around, and as you tighten this down, it's gonna pinch it between the screw and the base of the deck. Insulator is a very, very awkward circle. 510 pin flush yeah it's just absolutely beautiful the machining here on these airflows are is a little shungati little bit i feel like this could have been bored out a little bit more and maybe sanded because you could see that there is some jaggedness here i am extremely nitpicky at this point it's so minuscule what i'm looking at you're looking at this under a zoomed lens with your naked eye seeing this you're gonna need some kind of scope or something to get your sniper jammy out i don't know how you would see that other than that all the other machining throughout this whole deck is absolutely gorgeous even the screws i just don't know why they went with an allen screw over a phillips head what i kind of do at high end is i allow them like leeway you're allowed to fuck up and not include stuff just because it's high end i know that seems like a little counterproductive and awkward but that's the way that I look at it. You want to make some shit janky? Make it cost more, and I'm all for it. What a stupid word. Like, what is that? Is that junk and asshole? Janky? They do make a bell cap in stainless steel, which I do not own. Kind of wish I did. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this stainless steel and black. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, shit. Kind of reminds you of an armor, doesn't it? 
Oh, that is clean as shit. And the good thing with these super, super wide caps is they look really friggin' good. Those little ports that you see, these cutouts right there and right there, is actually for the screws. Put my pony pants on. Dual core, 26 with 38 on the outside. Real simple build. Typically the stuff I like to run. The bigger you go with this, the harder it's gonna be to put the coil in. Just because something like I have right here is kind of thick and having a dual core of 26 is not gonna be the best. I could get it in, but what happens here is you see how I'm bending this and bringing it back into the post? What you'll find is sometimes when you're screwing down a post like this, it's gonna kick the wire out. The reason why that is, is for instance, this wire wouldn't be kicked out because I'm turning this to the right so it's gonna grab it and further tighten it. If it was on the other side, as you tighten it, it's just gonna push it out. It's got a built-in jig situation going on. Loving it. That's it. Do a little snippage. Close your eye. Close your eye. Good job. Went right in my Drake. So later on, me sipping those wires. Doesn't get any easier than that. Let me put this on a mod. We'll heat it up, put some cotton in it. So let's see how this little jammy squonks on up. Here we go. Give it a good push. Rockin'. Now you're not gonna be able to go too far with this. When you're putting this together and you're putting the legs in, just try to make it so it's lined up. It's a little messed up the way that it is right now, but that shouldn't affect the flavor that much. As the cap goes on, as you turn this, don't squeeze it, just you'll feel a kind of catch. That is the Hellfire Sentinel. Let's bring it on the top. Back on the top of the Hellfire Sentinel, sitting on top of a pinky. First off, I want to tell you this. If you're going to do a coil as big as I did on a single coil dripper that has such a short throw, be very wary of using the other drip tip. The 0.55 build that I have on it isn't really that ridiculous. However, because it's kind of high set and it is a juicy coil, it's going to be prone to spit back. And having such a short throw of a dripper, you got to get used to the spit back. And the spit back really sucks ass. Doesn't have anything to do with the dripper. I'm just telling you before anybody's like, oh, that's on you, that the dripper design sucks. It's really got nothing to do with it. Well, it does in a sense because it is a short throw, but you should be compensating for that by making a smaller coil. Now, the drip tip that I'm using in it is the aftermarket drip tip made by them, which is the whistle tip. I'm not a huge fan of whistle tips just because if you have that in a mod or you have that in a billet, you have to hold it a certain way to vape it, otherwise it just feels awkward. If you go get a crossing guard whistle right now and put that inside of your mouth, and instead of doing it where your lips would normally go, Put it the other way. You can't close your lips around it. You look absolutely ridiculous. Being the way that I squonk and I drip, I always hold my mods like this. Now, if you hold it like this, be the same situation. I just have that drip tip configuration the way that I like it. Also, it being a little bit longer allows the spit back less travel, less likely to get inside of my mouth. Let me show you some of the vapor production I'm working with 34.5 on a .55 build. Here we go. Oh, that is, that's fucking delicious. Let me shut the fan off from the fan. Here you go. I'm getting a lot of flavor from this. A lot. So I'm just gonna tell you now, if you're already a squonker and you're gonna use this device, don't be so generous with how much you squonk inside of this because it is kind of short. So the vapor production I'm getting off of this is pretty good, but keep in mind it is a single coil, so you're not gonna be blowing huge clout. It's really gonna be designed for the kind of build I have in it and above. You can put a 0.1 build in this or a 0.2 if you're so inclined on a single coil, but at that point, why not just run dual 0.5s or dual 0.4s? If you're gonna be running a single coil dripper you're not building it for clouds it's just not designed for that i think that this is the same situation that this isn't designed for clouds it's machined really really well however looking at it underneath the lens you see a little bit of the flaws but then again there's not many drippers out there that you're not going to see any kind of flaws this is a high-end dripper and it does come out of the uk so if you're going to buy it from the states good luck you're going to need to know somebody that has one or you got so lucky to get on a list to grab one which both are going to be very very difficult to find most people went through hell and back just to get their hands on one
The airflow on this dripper is not super restrictive, but it's not such as wide open as all these Chinese drippers you're coming across. It's definitely not as airy as the Wasp Nano, so that should give you a better perspective if you already own a single coil and you already own a Wasp Nano. These are two very, very different devices. I don't want to put this in the same block as far as comparing, but the amount of flavor I'm getting off of this is better than the Wasp, but the airflow is more smoother on a Wasp than it is on this. Again, these are very, very different drippers. One is a $12 dripper, the other one is a $150 to $200 dripper. Plus all the different parts you can get with this, it looks nice. I won't deny that it doesn't look nice. I would really like the bell cap for the top of this, but I don't have it, so I have to work with the black Delrin that I have. Being that it's on a dual black box mod, dual black, dual black box mod, dual, dual, dual black box mod, dual black box, black, black box mod. Just trying to figure out how many times I'm going to say this before I get it right. Dual black box mod. There it is. Being that this is on a dual black box mod, it looks good. That stainless steel is a nice little accent. How would I rate this dripper on a 0 to 10? All right, probably a 5. 5.5. I don't feel that the price point that this is at can justify the dripper in the state that it's in. There's other high-end drippers that are single coil that I feel blow this out of the water. The Comet is a great example. Granted, you can't fit as big as coils inside of the Comet that you can with this. The price point is just off. I feel that it's off. I do. I really do. And I have a lot of high ends. We know how much I love high-end drippers. This is just not one of them. It's something that I could get by with using but I wouldn't go out of my way to use this dripper. If you're gonna make a dripper that's this small, I don't feel that it should be squawkable. I'm just having a really hard time justifying this past the five rating. I wouldn't say this is the worst device that I've ever got that's high end, but I definitely would say it's far from the most impressive. You know what I'm not a fan of with this dripper is that damn drip tip. The stock drip tip that this comes with, I feel should be two millimeters more in height, about the same height uh, as the whistle tip, just to stop that little bit of extra spit back. Again, that is gonna be dictated by the type of build you put in. In this. If you're putting regular round in this 24 gauge or even 22 gauge and making it low set, the airflow is going to go just over the coil. So you have to raise the coil up more to compensate for the airflow that's coming in through the side. It's kind of like a double-edged blade. You bring it higher up top, you get more spit back. You bring it lower down bottom, you're going to get less flavor, but you're going to get better airflow. This is just one of those drippers I'm kind of right in the middle with. I probably will never use this dripper outside of this review. A very, very strong five is what I would rate this dripper. It's not a letdown, but I'm definitely not impressed with what it is. And I've kept it real. Have you? Jay's out.